Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. It's okay. Come on up. Morning. Good morning. Okay, that's all right. We heard in the gospel message today, in John, he talks about Jesus being the light of the world. And we're supposed to testify about that. Later on in scripture, it also talks about us becoming the light of the world for Jesus. So I brought this flashlight along. You guys see this? You can turn around. Turn around. I brought this flashlight along to symbolize that we're to be the light for Jesus. Right? Okay. Okay. Maybe not. Oh, what do we got here? Well, all kinds of garbage in there, right? Yeah. Well, that's what happens with us. We're kind of full of garbage. And then Jesus comes in our life, and he removes all that garbage. And when he does, right, what happens? It's still not working. How come it's not working? Oh, yes. And you know what the batteries represent? The batteries represent the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit powers us. After Jesus cleans the garbage out of our life, the Holy Spirit powers us to become the light of the world. It's a little better than it went this morning. And then we can become the light of the world. How's that? Does that sound good? All right. Why don't we pray? Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Put your hand on there. Put your hand on there. Jesus, we thank you for becoming our light, and we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit as you promise, so that we can become the light for you. Amen. All right. Had me worried there, Ed. I know I said you had me worried. <clears throat> Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who, who, who? Many ways to answer that question, right? Who are you? You could answer it, uh, I don't know, a hundred different ways. Probably a good place to start would be with your name. So what's your name? Oh, good. You guys caught on. Good. Right? If you didn't holler out your name, right, holler it out now. What's your name? Good. Now that I know you, who are you? <laughs> what, makes, what makes you you? Or what do you have to say about yourself? I was uh, recently contacted by a church upstate um, by one of their youth ministers. They're doing a week-long, like, VBS kind of thing for their high school students, and he wanted to know if I could come and be a speaker for one of their nights. And I said, sure, that sounds great. Uh, he said, okay, here's what I want you to do. Send me um, a headshot. Now, I don't keep these around, right? I don't keep a headshot of me, so I was like, okay. And then, uh, and then he said, send me a three- to five-sentence bio about yourself and what you believe. Right? So in other words, he's asking me to, to a answer the question, who are you, in three to five sentences. That's kind of tricky, right? So I said, all right, I'll, I'll send you three to five sentences about myself. Uh, a couple of questions, though, right? What do I want a couple of hundred teenagers who I don't know to know about me? I figured I'd, I'd start with maybe the, first, the obvious, the most obvious, right? The second sentence I wrote 
um, was that I am bald. <laughs> oh, good, you laughed. Right? I, thought, I thought maybe I would start with some humor, right? Throw some humor in there. Um, I, I think it's good to be able to make fun of your flaws, right? Although they say bald is beautiful. <laughs> and uh, Scripture backs me up on this, by the way. Uh, Leviticus chapter 13, verse 40, you can look it up. A man who has lost his hair and is bald is clean. <laughs> so, few of you. Yeah, enough on that subject, though. Uh, but that's one way we identify ourselves, isn't it? Right? But how, by how we look, by our physical appearance, in whatever way that is. We describe our physical characteristics, tall, short, round, thin, ugly, beautiful, bald, hairy. These are ways we can describe who we are. Sometimes, sometimes, you can judge a book by its cover and it works out, but I don't recommend it, right? A person is way more complicated than that. Take John the Baptist, for example, uh, kind of the main figure of our gospel story for today. Now, our reading for today doesn't dis contain these descriptions, but elsewhere in the Bible, we, we hear some things about John's physical appearance. And I could guess you all would be able to tell me what you think John looks like, right? He wore clothes made out of camel hair, right? And leather, kind of a rugged dude. He ate locusts and wild honey, right? And he lived where? In the desert. So all, already you're getting a picture in your mind of what John looks like, right? Probably some kind of cross between a caveman and I, I don't know what else, hair that's crazy and wild, probably dirty, smelly, right? Um, probably thin, I mean, his diet is bugs and honey. Uh, you know, and maybe a little bit of crazy, maybe just a little crazy, because he lives out there by himself. That's the picture we get of John the Baptist. Now, I don't know, leather's still in, right? Some of you guys are wearing leather. Maybe camel hair will make a comeback, if it ever was a thing, I don't know. Uh, honey's certainly good, and I've heard that the future of food might just be bugs. It's a thing. But regardless, it's not John's appearance, right, which wins him um, center stage of our story here today. Uh, back to me for a second. The next line I wrote in my little three to five sentence biography was that I am married with three beautiful daughters. Now, the fact that my wife is beautiful should be implied, right? Because if my girls are beautiful, You've seen me, so it must be her where the good looks come from, right? So, interesting though about that description, sometimes we answer that question, who are you, based on the people around us, based on our circumstances, based on our community, right? Um, you answer, well, I'm from New York, or I'm from the country, or um, I'm a father, I'm a mother, uh, I have kids. I own four squirrels. I don't know. We, we answer the question, who are you, based on the things around us, right? Now, while these things might be true, they don't necessarily make you, you. They certainly shape you, form you, but they don't define you. Take, for example, John, uh, straight from the gospel. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Sometimes we answer that question by telling the things that we are not. <laughs> I am not this thing, or I am not that person. Right? The people who were looking to know who John was came and asked him. They were looking to assign him perhaps a label. A label that would make it easier for them. You know, labeling other people is an easy way for us to deal with them. Because it makes us comfortable. Oh, you're a musician, so now I know everything about you. Oh, you're a blue-collar worker, you're a theater nerd, you're an athlete. You're a white-collar worker. You're a whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as I know your label, I know who you are. Well, of course, that's ridiculous, right? 
That's totally wrong. Just like you can't judge a book by its cover, you can't make a judgment on a person based on their circumstance. But let's say the shoe does fit, and you do nestle quite nicely into some sort of stereotype. Regardless, that still falls short of answering our question of who are you. So finally, they come to John and says, who are you? Give us an answer to take back. What do you say about yourself? Now, I've given you the second and third sentences of my short description, but here is the first. This is the first thing I wanted those teenagers to know about me. I wrote, I am a sinner, loved by God, and redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. If you want to know who you truly are, we have to be honest with ourselves. Rather, we have to believe what God, our Creator, has revealed to us about ourselves. At my core, I am nothing but a creature, a sinful creature at that, a despicable, despicable creature who is way uglier on the inside than I am on the outside. But that no longer defines me. My sin no longer defines me, for I am loved by God. And God has made it abundantly clear to you and to the world that despite anything you may think could cause him not to love you, he loves you. And how do you know? The precious blood of Jesus on the cross. For God so loved the world, he sent his son. And if God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, he certainly loves you. John, the Baptist, knew his identity wasn't wrapped up in his appearance, or his community, or his parents, or his miraculous birth. The answer to the question wasn't what he ate, or where he lived, or what others thought of him. It was in what God had given him to do. John replied, in the words of Isaiah the prophet, Who are you? they said. And he answered, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the ways of the Lord. John obeyed his specific command from God. That was who he was. And there will never be another John the Baptist. Jesus fulfilled his specific role while on earth there was only one who could atone for the sins of all people. And there will never be another Messiah. But there are still plenty of people who need to hear, who need to hear about the love of Jesus. So my official bio statement in three to five sentences went like this. I'm a sinner, loved by God, redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. I'm also bald. I'm also married with three beautiful daughters. Then I wrote one more sentence, so four in total, in case you're counting. That's about all you need to know about me, but if you're curious to know more, just ask. You may not be called, like John, to go wandering the streets or the wilderness of the southern shore of Long Island, proclaiming the day of the Lord. But you have all been called to share what you know. You may not be called to be a pastor or a deacon or an elder or a leader in the church, but you can spend time with people to meet them in their needs, to provide for them, to pray with and for them, and point them to Jesus. You may not be called to be a public voice at all for the gospel, but you can certainly ensure that your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor hears the name of Jesus and what he has done. It may take time. It may be slow. It may be uncomfortable. But God, the Father, the Spirit who gives us the source of that light is with you. And I pray that you all live such lives as Paul described in his letter to the Thessalonians, that other people are curious about you and ask. 
that you, as St. Paul says, may never pay back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. That you might rejoice always, for you know the love of your Savior. That you might pray continually. That you might give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is how we answer the question, who are you? I am a redeemed child of God. I am part of a people set apart for good works in Jesus Christ until the very end, when Christ returns and brings all people to himself. So until that day, may the Spirit keep you steadfast in the true faith and, as we pray, in fervent love for one another. In Jesus' name, amen.